everybody. I'm Betty from the Wayne County Public Library in Holmesville, Pennsylvania, and welcome to Sunday Snugs Bug Bedtime Story Time. Hello, hi Charlie. How's everybody doing? Hi Caleb. Hi Gray. Hi Noah. Hi Emma. Hi Luke and Charlotte. How's everybody? It's been a weird weekend of sun and a, a little bit of snow yesterday. Hi, Braylon and Andin. Hi, Carter. Hi, Brentley. Hi, Lincoln. Oh, Sandra, I'm glad you're here. Hi, Jacob. Sandra and her family wanted to come to our library so badly that they drove all the way from Shahola. So that was a really big deal. Hello, Lydia. Hi, Declan. Oh my gosh, Declan. He was one of my first little snuggles of both boys. Let's get ready. All right, let's do our checklist. You have your pajamas on? Uh, do you have your stuffed animal or your blanket? I got my sloth. Do I have my hoops in? I'm all ready. Are you feeling cozy? You feeling snug as a bug? Let's get going, darlings. I've got a good one. This might be one of my favorites, but I think I say that about every book, but I think I really mean it this time. All right, this one is called Shea Bob. And you want to hear something funny? The author's name is Bob Shea. Now this, C-H-E-Z, it means chef in French. So, Shea Bob. And let's look at the cover always gives us clues, right? Okay, I see an alligator. And I see a bird eating on his snout. And I see the alligator is putting salt on the bird. What do you think? And he doesn't look very nice. Look how the, look how the artist made his eyes look. It's kind of mean. Let's see. Okay, here he is. Shea Bob by Bob Shea. Bob worked very hard at being lazy. Being lazy is making me hungry, said Bob. Maybe if I ask nicely, a bird will fly into my mouth and down right into my belly. He doesn't even want to work. He just, look at his little lazy eyes. Hey birds, fly in here, please, thank you. Hi, Brecken and Corbin. But look, are the birds, bir the birds are running away. No, but I said please and thank you, said Bob. Oh, look at that grass. The birds are in that grass. grass. I wish I had seeds on me. Then I'd have all the birds I want. Oh, wait, that's it. He has an idea. Now listen to what he said. Oh, that grass, the birds are eating it. Lucky grass, I wish I had seeds on me. Then they would come on me, and then he could eat them. Gives him an idea. I'm gonna open up a bird seed restaurant on my nose. Ooh, look, just what the cover said. Birds will come to eat, but I will eat the birds. I will sell my super smart idea to other lazy alligators and I'll be rich and famous and great. I will have diamond teeth and a solid gold hat. I'll be full of yummy, yummy birds. So Bob opened the restaurant, Shea Bob, the very next day. So he's got this great idea. He's gonna open up a restaurant on his nose. Right on his nose. Little birds. And what's he gonna do? gonna gobble them all up. That's his great plan. Welcome to Shea Bob, which is a real restaurant and not a trick at all. Look at his face. He's got his first table set. He's got his first customer. Let's see, said the bird. I will have the bird seed, pointing his wing at the only thing on the menu. Good choice, said Bob. Bob seasoned his seed with all his favorite spices, so his customers would taste extra yummy. 
<laughs> oh, look at his evil look. He's like this. <laughs> Delicious, said the bird. Oh, I'm going to tell all my friends what great restaurant you have. Oh, all right, then I'm not going to eat you, said Bob. What did you say, said the bird? Uh, uh, I said, so nice to meet you, said Bob. And he couldn't wait to meet the bird's tasty friends. Soon, Shea Bob was the talk of the trees. Birds flew in from all over the world to eat on Bob's face. Look, they're all coming all over. The peacock. I see a penguin. Look, they're camping out. They're camping out because he's got such a great restaurant. They're all talking about him. Hi, Damien, Amelia, and Luke. It wasn't long before a little town sprang up around Shea Bob. The birds built a school, a library, a little park, and a huge public transportation system with buses and taxis. That's weird since birds can't fly, said Bob. But look what they look what they created. They made a town all around his great restaurant. Look at all these I see. A playground. I see. Is this a big roller coaster? They're swimming in a lake. They're riding bikes. As a small business owner, Bob wanted to be a part of the community. So he coached the basketball team. Oh, it really feels good to be a positive role model for the birds I'm going to eat. I'm going to do nice things in the town for these birds that I'm going to gobble up, he's thinking. Since he was new in town, Bob joined a book club to meet some like-minded birds. He hit it off with everyone except the orange bird who never let anybody talk. How rude, thought Bob. I'm totally eating him first. He's coaching. He's in a little book club on his, he's having a book club on his nose. And he says, that orange one is annoying. I'm gonna eat that guy first. Bob treated his best customers to a sunset dinner cruise to thank them for coming to his restaurant. If it weren't for these birds I'm gonna eat, I'd be out of business, he thought. Look at him, he's making a little sunset cruise, putting on, he's got a little table set up, little chairs, taking them for a little ride. Frogs waving high, I see a turtle in a rowboat. Boy, these birds are living it up on, on Bob. That night, the birds stayed up way past their bedtime, chirping about all the fun they had with Bob that day. They look so cozy and warm, thought Bob. Maybe the birds I'm gonna eat, maybe they'll invite me over for a sleepover sometime. And Bob imagined a sad, lonely song in his head as he tried to fall asleep all by himself. Maybe I should get a cat to snuggle with or to snack on, he thought. So look, he's looking at all of the birds in their little cozy birdhouse and look at his face. Look at his face. He's feeling a little lonely. What's happening to him? He's saying, oh, I wish they would invite me to a sleepover sometime. <gasps> what do you think is happening to that alligator's heart? The next morning, Bob was so excited. Hi, Blake and Bryce. The next morning, Bob was excited to see the birds. Hey guys, I went for a walk this morning and I picked some pretty flowers for your nest. Oh, and, and guess what? I, I think I saw a turtle, cool, right? But before they got to hear about the cool turtle, the sky turned dark. And crack! Oh my goodness, it's a storm, shouted Bob. Quick, everybody fly into my mouth for safety. It's gonna happen. This is all he wanted. He wanted those birds in his mouth so he could gobble them up. Let's think about this. I'm gonna have to take a sip of my tea. I'm on the edge of my seat. What do you think's gonna happen? Ooh, is he gonna gobble up those birds? The startled little birds swarmed into Bob's gaping jaws. That means huge, open wide to escape from the storm. Hi, Christina. All right, I'm gonna turn the page. We're gonna see what happens. Fingers crossed that this ends happy. Mm. 
Now is my chance. Now is my chance to eat the birds, thought Bob. I cannot wait to see the looks on their beaks when they check out my diamond teeth and my solid gold hat because I'm going to be so rich for my smart plan about the restaurant. They're going to be jealous and amazed. Look at him. Let's turn another page for that what happens. Look, wait a minute. The little birds would not see my hat or my teeth because all the little birds would be inside my belly. Bob looked around at the quiet, empty town. The solid gold hat. And it seems kind of silly now, and diamond teeth didn't seem so cool anymore. Oh, the storm ruins his town, the town. He's thinking, what good is it going to be for me to have a gold hat or diamond teeth? The teeth, the, the birds aren't going to be able to see it because they're going to be in my, in my belly. Bob could hear the birds in his mouth, laughing, playing, cleaning his teeth. Let me tell you something interesting. Alligators sometimes will go around swimming with their mouths open and they have all kinds of um, food that they ate and dirt stuck in their teeth. And there are certain birds that come and take all the, that extra food out of their teeth. And the alligators don't eat them because those little birds are doing them a favor by getting all that gunk out of their teeth. So Bob could hear the birds in his mouth laughing, playing, and cleaning his teeth. Bob knew what he had to do. Look at his face. He knew what he had to do. He opened up his mouth and he let the birds out. Yay, Bob saved us. Cheered the birds that, that Bob was practically going to eat. I don't think hero is too strong a word. Do you, asked Bob? And a hero deserves a super secret hero surprise, said a bird who was very excited. Follow us. Okay, let's follow them, see what they're doing. We've been working on a bob-sized nest, especially for you, said a bird who was good at keeping secrets. Now we can be together always, said a bird with a big heart. Oh my gosh, you are all so sweet. Look at they, what, look what they made. They added him to their nest, a big nest on the bottom for the alligator, a size, a perfect size for an alligator with a sign that says, welcome home, Bob. Now we can be together always, said a bird with a big heart. Oh my gosh, you are all so sweet. And I should know since I just spit you out, said Bob to the birds. He was absolutely, without a doubt, definitely not going to eat. The end. And then they're all playing together. Let's look at this picture. I love this. This is my favorite one. He ended up. What did he start off? I'm going to eat those birds. I'm going to trick them. I'm going to make a restaurant on my nose. They're going to sit on my nose and boom, snap. I'm going to gobble them up. But then he got to know them. And he, they were so kind to him and they loved him. And he said, I'm going to, he protected them from the storm. And that was the perfect time. He had them all in his mouth. He could have just gobbled them up and had a nice little bird dinner. But he heard them so happy in there talking about what a great day they had with him. They were cleaning his teeth out. How could he eat them? I love this story so much. On a scale from one to 10, I love it a million. Shea Bob. Hi, Bob Shea. Good stuff. It's a good one, right? Give me a thumbs up if you like it. I loved it. So, tomorrow's Monday. We got to talk about our week. What do you have to do? Go into the week with your brain ready for learning and your ears ready for listening and your heart ready to be kind. Because those are things you got to do. You got to go into the week with a positive feeling, with your shoulders and head up high and your heart ready to be kind. Because... 
You are smart. You are loved. You are wonderful, right? So let's do it. Oh, there's no school tomorrow. That's right, Christina. All right, then, then you have to stay home tomorrow and you have to, you have to be good listeners to your grown-ups. And you have to do something to make your brain work. Think of something you can do. Could you build really great, really great tower with Legos? Could you draw a picture? Could you start to write a little story? Good things to do. All right, let's do it. Hands together. I want to hear you all the way here at my house. So it better be loud. I am smart. I am loved. I am wonderful because you're all those things. I love my Sundays with you. Sometimes if I'm feeling sad or if I'm feeling kind of grumpy or if I'm feeling, have a lonely feeling on a Sunday, I think, oh, I'm with my slug as a bug guys tonight. And then I get a real happy look on my face. It's the truth. If you were birds in my mouth, I wouldn't eat you because I love you so much. It's the truth. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Hi, Cash. Hi, Nicole. Have a good night. And thanks for joining me. And have a lovely day tomorrow. Let's hope it's sunny. Let's hope it's sunny. And Wednesday's going to be 60. Hoo-hoo, you're going to see me walking around. All right. Have a good night, everybody.